Hi there, good morning. Thanks for tuning in to the Trade Setup. Uh, I'm Neeraj Shah and um, it promises to be an exciting day and an exciting weekend because it's bunched up with numbers and fair degree of volatility in asset classes across the world. And that's what we'll try and uh, kind of decipher today. So let's quickly get to uh, the basics. First, uh, the US markets uh, and how they performed last evening or last night rather actually. And then a quick look at Asia as well. So it was a decent enough performance and uh, the bulls, I think, needed this uh, after two days of site discomfort on the benchmark indices for India. You needed the globe to do okay. I think that's what the globe has done. So good, good show by the US markets. The futures are flat currently, but nothing uh, too untoward. The key is, though, um, a lot of uh, retail traders are into metal stocks. And I urge people to be a bit careful about metals. Now, there are two reasons why I'm saying this. First is this chart right on the Bloomberg terminal, which shows how steel rebar, hot coal, coil have seen the biggest weekly drops in at least a year. If you look at the last five day performance of aluminum, copper, all of those base metals have come off on the LME. So you have to keep that in mind. That is part one. So there has been a bit of a weakness right in Hindalco, for example, or, or some of the others. But 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 uh, this weekend, post market hours or maybe Hindalco might come in during market hours, but you will have to uh, people who, if they are short on metals will have to contend with presumably decent commentary from steel companies like JSW from Hindalco and the others and Hindalco commentary you, we know will be good simply because Novelis commentary was pretty decent when they came out with numbers or by, when they when they declared their data so just keep this in mind it's a bit of a tricky situation if you don't quite know how well to play best not to look at metals okay but the world markets Asia's um, not bad mixed bag some markets in the red some markets in the green so it's a bit of um uh topsy-turvy so to say no big moves that's the only thing because volatility seems to be on the lower side and the sgx nifty will next come up on your screen we've had a small pullback if you will the last couple of sessions in today's session uh we look like we'll start off well actually we have done even better but yeah uh still we look like we're starting off marginally higher which is something that should, that should please the bulls the only problem as I see it, uh, amongst other things, is that Chris Wood has, in his uh, weekly greed and fear, at times it comes by, you know, um, fortnightly, but this is what he says, that with the Indian stock market back near the high reached earlier this year before the COVID second wave, an astonishing outcome given the news flow, greed and fear will make a change in the Asia Pacific ex Japan relative return portfolio, overweight in India reduced by two percentage points with the money added to Australia. So. Two ways to read this. The overweight still stays, but not as gung-ho on India as, as he was three weeks back when he did the interview with us. Now, yes, I think a lot of people will argue, why, why does a long-only guy change his view so much? This is tactical allocation, right? The overweight percentage has been reduced, and smart investors would do that. Now, again, this is not to say that Chris Wood is right, and therefore the markets will correct, so on and so forth. For all you know, the markets may do really well, right? Gotham Shah of Goldilocks said that his chart suggested that we are in a strong uptrend. So anything can happen. We bring in the news. By the way, just keep in mind, um, I think the long position on Maruti also has been altered a bit. So just, just watch out for Maruti to win the session today. Uh, now, what uh, just and, and just a quick glimpse on what the trade happened yesterday, right? Before I move to specific stops. Frankly, I don't have too much in trade setup today. But we, we all know what the trade setup is today, right? That the markets are looking strong. Eminent investors are saying take some money off. So that's the trade setup. And metals, you need to be careful of. This is what some of the individual movers were. Now, in yesterday's session, for the first time in five days, we had adverse market breadth, two is to three in favor of the declines. And look at the commodity names out there. Sale down 5%, Tata Steel down 5%, Tata Steel is at 1105. Sale had gone up to a high of 146, it's down to 121. Jindal Steel and Power, 5% lower. Hindalco, another 4.5% lower. This tells you a story, viewers, the point that I was trying to make. Commodities are getting rogered. And I doubt that today will be too different simply because the correction has just continued. So you might well be on the bitter end of the stick when it's come to commodity names in today's session. Uh, there's some pullback in the likes of Venkis, etc. and all of that. Uh, so do watch out for that pocket. At the other side, though, or enough and more. So India Cements, for example, yesterday, the street was excited that, oh, Ramesh Dhawan is going to join the board, something that he outrightly denied. So, you know, the point is just that, that the street is becoming, um, how do I say a bit more reckless with uh, companies at the broader end of the spectrum and you need to be careful about them so just please keep that 
at the back of your mind. Now, um, what are the results today? I'll, I think today and tomorrow, I'll just quickly enumerate all the numbers that are going to come out. Big day for numbers today on the, the on the Nifty sides. Shri, Indalco, JSW, SBI. I reckon Shri and Indalco will come in in market hours. JSW, Steel and SBI post market hours. Probably your SBI will just come in just around market hours. So do watch out for those. Uh, on the non-Nifty side, United Spirits, Dr. Lal, Back Labs, Concord, very set, important set of numbers. Uh, Billa Soft, CG Consumer Electricals, Danuka Agritech. So a bunch of names that you need to watch out for today. And there are two or three small names on Saturday as well. Uh, one of them being uh, Amber Enterprises. And they give a fabulous interaction to us when they spoke about the long-term growth trajectory. And MCX, typically, when gold, silver, and extra commodities and all of them are up, then MCX tends to do well. So do watch out for that one as well. What about stocks that will react today? That's the key thing. All right, um, this morning. So, yeah, there are a bunch of stocks. Let me just pull them up. Okay, let's start with the first one, HPCL, right? Standalone revenues uh, came in uh, at about uh, uh, at about 74843. The estimates were 82441. Look at the operational metrics, look at the net profit. I think they did exceptionally well on all of those fronts. EBITDA margin nearly doubled, not nearly doubled, actually doubled. Net profit just about doubled as well compared to what was estimated by the way so this is beating estimates very very handsomely and by the way they gave a very large dividend so i think that will keep not only hpcl excited but bpcl excited as well because now people will start believing that the numaligar refinery sale dividend will come in from bpcl so you have to keep that at the back of your mind JP Morgan's note on HPCL, I've brought that for you. Um, the rating is an overweight. The target price has been raised to 330 uh, from 285. It was 285 earlier. Uh, they say that it's a large beat driven by inventory gains, but they see a sharp improvement in HPCL's underlying operating performance, X inventory gains. That's important. They are saying that the underlying operating performance will improve even if you remove the inventory gains. The refining margins, they're saying, showed uh, that are improving and the daily fuel price hikes all of these aided fundamentals uh, they increased the fr22 23 eps estimates by about 14 percent and 8 percent respectively so watch out for hpcl performance and dividend both of these should keep this stock excited and trade i'll watch out for z uh, actually the numbers are okay i think uh, uh, the commentary was more bullish. So I brought you the CLSA note on Z. The rating is a buy, the target price is 306. According to them, the fourth quarter numbers are ahead of estimates and the ad revenue is up 9% YOI is pretty strong. Uh, on the con call, I think they heard the CEO say that they, he expects a rapid ad revenue recovery if there are no extended lockdowns, which we all hope there aren't. I mean, there should be if there are health issues, but otherwise, no. Uh, the balance sheet cash has increased to 18.6 billion versus 10 billion in FY20, according to their calculations. And their math, the stock trades at 12 times P and offers value, frankly. I mean, if all was kosher on, in terms of uh, their performance being consistent quarter on quarter on quarter, then this valuation should not have been there. I think Z has spoken a lot about uh, things looking very good. It hasn't always turned out that way. This time around, the numbers are looking good. Their commentary is looking good. I suspect Z could do well in the session today. Won't be surprised if it turns out to be that big large cap mover today. But let's wait and watch. The street needs to give it the benefit of doubt. So I will watch out for Z. Um, they, they also spoke about how the investments in those subsidiaries and apps, etc., will now be a bit more um, prudent. And that helps. Uh, JK Lakshmi Cement, historic quarterly numbers for the for the company on the revenue, a bit up at and a bit up a ton front. So these are the numbers. Revenue is up 10%, highest ever. historically high numbers, volumes 2.9 million metric tons. Realizations 4,552 up about 2.9%, and a bit up a ton, a 30% improvement at 922 rupees per ton. Splendid numbers, and viewers remember. I spoke about I spoke about how cement companies are getting rewarded if they come out with good numbers. Remember Billa Corp? We spoke about it. Remember uh, Orient Cement? It was up about three and a half percent on the day the results came out, even though it had a bit of a run up. Now do watch for the run up ahead of 
uh, the results on JK Lakshmi. But I wouldn't be surprised if it, ha if it has a good day today. So do watch out for JK Lakshmi cement in the session. Um, I think Torrin Power and Hamlets were an inline set of numbers, so not really speaking too much. And by the way, just also watch out for the sugar names. The government yesterday apparently has um, reduced the export subsidy on sugar from 6,000 rupees per ton to 4,000 rupees per ton. Now, what will happen is, viewers, that what may happen, let me qualify my statement, what may happen is that people may come out and sell the stocks today, thinking that uh, if the export subsidy is gone, then the earnings will get impacted. Sure, they get impacted a little bit, but I don't think sugar is the big driver for the sugar companies, the commodity, ethanol is. So you may want to do your math and try and figure out uh, what is a good price to buy some of these names uh, if indeed they see some selling. But some selling they might see. Exports might still be viable. A crystal note actually says that exports are still viable. But yeah, do watch out. By the way, my colleague Nikki has written a very interesting note on what's the sweet thing for sugar. It'll get published today or tomorrow. So either today or tomorrow on the Bloomberg Queen website, you may want to go and read about sugar. Uh, I've written an opinion piece uh, two, three months back. You may want to read that also for an overarching view on what sugar is. But yeah, read both of those pieces. They should help you if you want to make an investment decision in sugar. Last but not the least, what stood out for me was this. Uh, the European Parliament uh, halted on Thursday a ratification of a new investment pact with China until Beijing lift, lifts the sanctions on EU politicians, which is, and, and this is the point, right? Everybody's talking about whether or not the rift between China and the rest of the world is, is now going away, etc. I think there are some deep fissures which may take time to get filled. And therefore, everything that serves the China plus one story might still have a play in the investors' minds and in reality as well. So you've got to keep that at the back of your mind. Uh, let's just see how it shapes up over the course of the next couple of years for some of those. Anyway, so that's the long and short of it. Uh, the trick today, the tricky part today is metals because commodities are coming off, but we might have two strong results and commentaries today from JSW and Hindalco. So you have to bear that in mind. But largely commodities have come off. So be careful if you trade them. Sugar may come off today because of the export subsidy piece. And watch out for JK Lakshmi, uh, <laughs> Havels, yes, but Z as well as HPCL and BPCL. Some very interesting names today that might react at 9.15. Thanks so much. Please stay safe. And if you step out, please mask up.